Yeah, I can't wait, John. Another film I'm looking forward to is The Matrix 4. Mm. That's what we're going to talk about now. And uh, this came in from Screen Rant once again. Why the Resurrections title is perfect for Neil's return. Now, we, we've we talked about Matrix 4 quite a few times, John, yes. on the show over the last 12 months or so. One thing we didn't really touch on was obviously the title of what it was going to be called. We were referring to it as Matrix 4 like everyone else, but it was something we never really... Uh, had any theories on like we we have done with Spider Man three what it's going to be called, um, but Resurrections kind of ties in with biblical references that the Wachowskis have always associated with the yep. original trilogy, uh, and I'm just going to read this little bit, John, that's coming in from Screen Rant, and then I'll let you in with uh, your thoughts and maybe some theories as well about Neil's uh, mm. pending the resurrection, his resurrection. His, well, he was uh, always a sort of Christ-like yeah. figure, wasn't he? So, it, yeah. it, it, so uh, it fits. It, yeah, so it says here, um, from the themes of love, free will and self-sacrifice to biblical names like Zion and Nebuchadnezzar, the Matrix trilogy contains many obvious parallels to Christian theology. And now the Matrix series has introduced the biblical concept of resurrection. Since Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are returning and the Matrix 4 takes place after Matrix 3, it effectively confirmed that Neo and Trinity will both be resurrected. But while the title Matrix Resurrections would connect the series to biblical themes even more, it also implies Neo's return might not last. Neo's identity as the One has been compared to other Christ figures and figures like Harry Potter, Aslan and Superman. Mm -hmm. Each of those characters had died and been resurrected, but the archetype has been used in popular fiction so often that it becomes a predictable trope. The Matrix 4 could subvert the trope and include an aspect of Christian theology that really included in popular fiction alongside resurrection ascension. After the Neo sacrificed himself to save humanity, for which he was likely granted resurrection, he may move up may, he may move on to some sort of elevated plane of existence in Matrix Resurrections. Hmm. John, I never, I never really thought beyond Matrix 4, to be honest with you. If it's going to be another trilogy or not. Another question is will Carrie Ann Moss and Keanu Reeves continue on after Matrix 4 anyway? Mm. Well, Stephen, I, I sincerely hope we do because when I think of the Matrix, I think of Keanu Reeves, really. And uh, if he's not there, then you've lost a huge part of that attraction to the movies. But I suppose if Lana Wachowski sets it up in such a way whereby he's passing the baton on to another intriguing character, then I could maybe be inclined to go and watch maybe two other movies afterwards. I never really looked at it that way, that he could be moving on to another elevated plane of existence. I don't know if I like that. This guy was already a borderline god within the Matrix mm. itself. I go to myself, Stephen, give you a break, man. You've been absolutely hammered the entire show. I've been on you, I've been Joe, I've been on you. You've not had a break, man. Um, either way, I'm really, I really am excited for this movie now. Um, there was a point where I wasn't. Really, that first about it, I thought, why are we doing another Matrix movie? We had a trilogy, realistically, one good movie in the trilogy. Maybe the second movie had its, its moments, maybe 1.5 good movies out of an entire trilogy. The film industry's moved on, expectations from fans have moved on. What you can do with pioneering visuals and stuff like that, like the Wachowskis were famed for back in the first Matrix, has moved on. It's hard to stun people excite people. We've already obviously seen it with Favreau and uh, the Mandalorian, what he's doing with the screen technology. We've seen it time and again with James Cameron. So I don't, I, initially I wasn't overly infused at the thought of the Matrix coming back, but look, I'll bring you back in <laughs> just because. I've seen enough of ugly mush in my Casper light head. Um, but now they've kind of changed me around. The excitement from Gary Ann Moss, the excitement from Keanu Reeves. This is a guy who's in a renaissance just now. He's hot property. This guy doesn't have to put any old shitty script. He's doing passion no. projects and he's doing things like um, Bill and Ted. He's unfinished business that he could finally get it financed because he's on the rise. So the fact he's saying the script's good, there's something interesting there. That intrigues me as well because there must be something. And then everybody else round about saying it's a really interesting script. So I'm on board for it. The only other thing, again, I keep saying it, where the hell is Morpheus? He's another main player. You've got Trinity in there, you've got Neo but you've not got Morpheus. I think this is going to be a sort of Search for Morpheus type movie. I'm convinced of it. Because yeah. the character is almost like Luke Skywalker. This guy is such, such an important character to the world. 
But this is intriguing, man. They're right what they say. The sort of Christ-like uh, comparisons we've seen in the original uh, Matrix trilogy. He was the Christ, the Redeemer, the sort of saviour, the one. They do, they rightly say Aslan, Harry Potter, Superman. You've had it with Paul Atreides as well in June. Mm. This sort of the chosen one and how that can yeah. weigh down and how it can affect this person's ability to carry out the thing they're meant to be doing. So it's intriguing. He'd done it in the original Matrix. I don't know how they go around this with this one, but Resurrection, maybe he's been resurrected back from the dead to save the day. I hope not, though. I hope it's a prequel or they're going back to an alternate timeline yeah. or some shit like that. I don't want to see the events that happened after Revolutions, was it? So it's yeah. intriguing. It is intriguing. Um, I, I do agree. I think it is a good title. It'd be a fitting title. It'd oh, certainly man. be in line with what we had before. Yeah. There's something in the back of my head that this is going to be a pass in the bit on, and I, I'm fed up with this kind of formula uh, for franchises that were dead and buried, let's be honest with you. Mm-hmm. You know, after Reloaded... Ghostbusters. The, the, the quality <laughs> that with this trilogy. Um, I, w- I was happy for The Matrix to, to be a standalone film. I wasn't really that bothered about sequels. Um, it's all in hindsight now. You know, I was probably excited as most people were when it was announced there was going to be sequels to that original 1999 film. Mm-hmm. And there's something about the original that I just liked. I think it was a self-contained group on the Nebuchadnezzar. Um, it's you know, um, been educated in how the Matrix works through the likes of Morpheus and Trinity. You know, and as um, or, or I should say, Neil was the sort of um, the audience. You know, he was going along the story at the same pace as ourselves yeah. and learning how these things operate and the, the truth about the Matrix as well in the real world. Um, after you do that, I get the whole Zion thing and you know expanding out the sort of mythology and, and um, expanding the cast as well. Um, I, I totally understand they've got to do that to keep it interesting, keep it fresh, but there's something lost after that first film for me. Yeah. I know that a lot of people like Reloaded, I like the, the twins. Effects, I, I feel, yeah, they were great, John. Some of the visual effects have dated terribly, mm. as we've, you know, um, scoffed at the whole Agent Smith thing, the multiple agents, uh, with the face thing going on, um, just cut and paste. You remember the time, though, Stephen, though? That was yeah. revolutionary at the time. Yeah. People were creaming fun, themselves yeah. over that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really yeah well. John, I, I don't know, I... I a story like that, I think, was always intended after they brought out um, the second one, the third one. I do think that that was supposed to tie things up and wrap things up, and that's why they killed off, obviously, the main two. Um, which is interesting because the main two who were killed off in the third one are coming back, and the one that actually survived isn't coming back. <laughs> so, I, I'm like yourself, I would have preferred possibly a, a prequel or, or an alternative universe, uh, you know, where that trilogy stays where it is and if you want to go back and watch that and enjoy it you can and this yep. is a new thing you know we're bringing these two main characters back into another world you know and another story and it's something separate but it does look like it's going to be a continuation I'm afraid well Steve what you say is there about the, the two of them or the characters make that didn't make it being involved in the character that did make it not being involved perhaps they will resurrect into a different world, different universe or something and that's where the story's going to carry on Sans perhaps Morpheus, I don't know I've got faith in Lana though, which I always get to get it right man, and yeah, hopefully it'll be a semi-decent it. hopefully it's not another dark fate but it's just a letdown, shit and abomination we're going, to, um, we're going to move on John, about a